Hello friends, we are still not employed by Fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Graph problems have always been a big no-no for me. I have always been afraid of graph problems, but the thing is now I have decided to take them heads on. And uh, today uh, we are going to start doing more graph videos. So this is the first of many graph problems to come. And uh, this question has been really popular with Facebook recently. It's been asked 44 times, which is a huge number. Also, key other companies like Amazon, Google, Bloomberg, Microsoft, Twitter, they are also asking this question. But the thing is, Facebook, for some reason, has been really interested. So I highly urge you to go and uh, check this video if Facebook is one of your dream companies to join. Okay, this is a lead code medium problem and we are given a reference node in a connected undirected graph. So first let's understand the meaning of these two values. Suppose we are given a graph like this. Notice that there are only four nodes and from any single node we can reach to all the other nodes in the given graph which means that this is a connected graph. So this is what connected means and undirected graph means suppose we are given a graph like this. Uh, and we establish that A is B's neighbor, which means that we can traverse from A to B and also we can traverse from B to A. So there is no restriction regarding the direction of uh, any direction of any edge between two nodes. So we are given a reference point to that and we need we need to return a deep copy of the graph. So what does a deep copy of the graph means that suppose we are given a graph like this. So we need to return a graph like this. Where if you see the values of the nodes, they are all the same. But the thing is, we are not using the exact same nodes. We are using different nodes with same node values, uh, which means that this would be a legitimate case uh, where we can consider this as a deep copy of this original input. The thing is, if we create a graph like this, over here we are using we are using these the same node to represent over here which means that we are not creating a copy of this original graph we are just referencing this point to whatever value we had over here so this is not what we want to give and also if we create some graph like this if we see the values of the nodes the values remains the same but the thing is the ordering is different that in terms of neighbor selection and uh, how they are perceived they are different. So this is also a false case. We need to return a copy of this exact same input just with the nodes that are copied from this one. So at the beginning the most basic idea we are going to have is that uh, okay we are given an input we are given a reference point we know that the input graph is connected which means that we, there are no loose ends that we have to worry about so why don't we just traverse through the uh, in given input graph at every single node we start creating a copy of it we start creating the same sort of neighbor connections that we have in the original graph and then just try to return the new graph that would be a perfectly good uh, logical rational person would think and uh, that that would be a good entry point to start our solution. But the thing is we are going to see that with that approach what would be the issue, how can we remediate that issue and uh, what would be the final solution. So let's start. So first of all suppose in this given input we start at this one position. So we create a new node one. Okay. Now from this one, we can go to any neighbor, we can go to two or we can go to four. Let's say that we go, we go clockwise. So we go to two. So we create a new, no, new neighbor over here called two. Again, from this two, we go to three uh, and over here, keeping the same logic, we create a new node. Now notice one thing that initially we had, uh, we created a clone over here. We went to its neighbor. Again, we created a clone over here. We went to its neighbor. Again, we created a clone over here. We will go to its neighbor. So basically for we are doing the same problem again and again for different kinds of input. So that should immediately click in your mind that this we are going to solve recursively. So just keep this in mind that this this is a very good way to use the recursive approach. And uh, now at this three again, we go to its neighbor. So we'll create an edge and we'll create a new node for uh, for this one. So from this four again, we go to its neighbor. Again, we go over here, but the, the issue with this approach is 
that for this our recursion to end we need to have a terminating case but in this scenario we are not terminating it anyhow because the thing is the graph is connected we are terminating in a scenario where if the graph is empty we return something empty or something like that but the thing is over here again we when we come back to this one we are still going to see that okay this is one we need to create the clone of it we will create a clone of it again over here which means that we are going to do we are going to overwrite whatever value we have which is which would be the same value again we would go to two we would again recreate another clone again we would go to three again we would create another clone again four again another clone we were so basically we are going to end up inside the loop again and again infinitely this is almost like infinity war thanos is gonna spend snap his fingers something like that because we are completely uh destroying our computers resources our company's resources because it's an infinite loop it's never gonna stop so and the reason it's never gonna stop is because we are doing the repetitive work again and again and again and that is the issue so somehow we need to resolve the issue so how we are going to resolve the issue well basically the idea is simple if at any point suppose we create an additional data structure in that additional data structure we keep track of whatever the value we have traversed already or we have cloned already if we know that which means that initially when we start we are going to check in that new data structure first that hey this element have I used, have I cloned it already? If I have cloned it already, I would skip over, I would go to next element. If I haven't cloned it already, I would create a new clone of it. And then I will put the same entry in the hash map first before I go to the next element. So that way, when after this first circle comes and when I come back to the same position, I would know that, okay, I have already calculated this one, which means that I don't need to calculate it again and I can skip over it. First of all, let's create, let's see that what kind of additional data structure we are going to create where we can immediately find that whether we have visited any particular element or not, which means that we are going to do a lot of searching. Hence, we will need a data structure that is very quick and efficient in terms of finding the, uh, any element that whether it contains that element or not. Uh, and the answer is pretty simple. If that kind of scenario happens, we need to use hash map or hash set or something with the hashing. We cannot use the linked list over here. It would work fine, but it's going to add that much more uh, additional time strain or on our system. So make sure that you justify your reasoning. I mean, in the interviews, people are not typically going to ask that. Why did you use hash map? This is a given, but the thing is that, uh, thinking should be clear in your mind that why you are using it and in most of the graph problems uh, typically hash map is being used now inside this hash map we are going to store two values so as a key we are going to store a node and as a value we are also going to store the node but thing is as the key we are going to store this input node and as the value we are going to store the cloned node that we will create so let's see that what, what should be the algorithm for our solution and how we are going to approach it. So initially we start at this position one. Now at this position one, first of all, we check that whether we have this entry inside our hash map or not. Okay. We don't have the entry inside the hash map because we can find it in constant time. If the entry does not exist, we first of all, create a clone node. Okay. Clone node has been created. Now, after creating the clone node immediately before even we check for the neighbors of this one immediately we are going to add an entry inside the clone node so the value would be the cloned value that we have created and the key would be the original uh, input we are given now this is done now we are going to check for this one's neighbor so one let's say we end up at this neighbor number two so again for this neighbor number two first of all we are going to check that whether neighbor number two exists in this hash map or not. It does not exist. So we will create a clone. Now the clone has been created. First, we will add the value to the hash map. And after adding the value, we would again go uh, again recursively do uh, find for the two's neighbors. So in this case, uh, the two's neighbor would be three. So we will create a first we will check that whether three exists in the hash map. Three does not exist. So we create the node and then we create this one. Now again, we check for the value number four, four does not exist. So again, we create an entry inside the hash map. We provide the key value and then we create the clone node four again. 
now for the fourth we again check for its neighbor so fourth neighbor one neighbor is one which we already have it in hash which which means that now we can ignore this case because we have already dealt with one now second neighbor for four is three which already exists in the hash map which means we can we can be dealt with it uh, we go back uh, two is already done one is already done which means that now we are running out of neighbors to tag track from inside the given uh, original input and we know that the original input is completely connected graph which means that there is at no point there is a possibility that there exists some value 5 over here that is part of this graph but it is not provided uh, using this connection because all the elements are connected which means that this would be our final clone graph that we need to return so after the loop ends and the recursive termination cases trigger we can simply return whatever the clone graphs we have found because from any single location we are able to guarantee to reach all the other elements and once that that is done essentially we are done so this is a very effective solution basically all we are doing is just we are traversing over the given graph and uh, during the traversal we are doing something so in this case we are cloning it um, we are using the hash map to keep track of whatever the visited elements that we have been through and uh, the solution is pretty efficient it's uh, it's not the most difficult problem in the world but the thing is i am very bad at graph problems so and uh, i have always been scared of graph problems but the thing is now i have decided to spend more time on graph problems because if you want to join facebook you can't you can't even think about not doing graph problems okay so today is first of many problems to come uh, if we see the time and space complexity the time complexity in this case would be big o of v plus e where v is the vertices and e are the number of edges because notice that over here we are only doing this much work we are not doing any additional work so that's pretty simple and in terms of space complexity it would actually be because of v uh, in terms of number of vertices because over here we had four vertices and uh, in the hash map we created four entries uh, so whatever the number of vertices we are provided we are going to use that and uh, that would be our space complexity so the solution is actually pretty efficient uh, the, we are using depth first search to solve this problem but even we can solve it with using breadth first uh, search so it makes no difference in terms of time complexity but the thing is i just did this using depth first search next one i am going to use breadth first search maybe so first of all we are going to create a new hash map and we are going to name it visited to keep track of whether we have already visited the node node or not now inside the method first of all we are going to check that if the given node is null which means that we can return the node okay and also we are going to check that if uh the if we have already visited the existing node then we are simply going to return whatever the uh, value we have stored inside the visited hash map okay if this is not the case uh, first of all we are going to create a clone node so let's just name it clone node and in inside the clone node we are going to give it the value of whatever the node value that we currently have and we are going to assign a new array list we are going to add the new clone node to the visited node we are going to run a for loop for all the neighbors of existing node So inside the loop we are going to iterate over the neighbors of the existing node and we are going to create the clone nodes for that and inside the current clone node we are going to put the neighbor as an array list so and over here we are going to make the recursive call with the neighbor after this loop ends we are simply going to return the clone node Let's try to run this code. 
okay seems like our solution is working let's try to submit the code okay our solution works and it works uh, pretty efficiently there is still room to make a lot of improvisation as we can see that our solution is not the most efficient but the thing is i'm really bad at graphs so it took me a lot of time to make this video because i need to understand very thoroughly by myself first before i can create the video uh, but soon i'm going to do a lot of graph videos so it's gonna so my video quality is gonna improve and also my coding is gonna improve so hope for the best and uh, let me know in the comments what do you think about the video and uh, yeah see you next time thank you